electro culture. And that's the last one we're going to talk on, uh, talk about today. You know, I don't have a, a, a lot of knowledge about electro culture. I just see these TikTok videos and Instagram reels where these guys are like sticking things into the ground and attaching to the plant. And can you explain to us what electro culture is? And is there any value to it? Does it actually work? Or is this like not something that works whatsoever? <laughs> Yeah, and electroculture is interesting because you know, like we just talked about with um, with bird chirps and with noises, you know, that came out of a university in the in the nineteen eighties. You know, so there was someone that did actually did a lot of work, fifteen years worth of research, and he was able to demonstrate and and you know prove pretty much that there is something at play here. Um, whether or not he was one hundred percent right is less relevant than the fact that he discovered something worth exploration. You know, there's definitely something going on. Let's try to characterize it. Let's try to figure out what's happening. Electroculture is a little bit older, um, probably goes back to like the mid 1800s, maybe the late 1800s. People were trying to figure out if electrical fields had any kind of impact on plant growth. And, you know, keep in mind, this is before we even knew or, you know, had a very good understanding of NPK fertilizer. We had no idea what the essential elements were for plant growth. We didn't know calcium from phosphorus back then, you know, the stuff was characterized much later. But the idea basically is that with electroculture, you are creating an electrical field for the plants. Typically, it's a piece of copper wire or copper tubing that's used, um, and this electrical field will impact plant growth or benefit plant growth. Um, I think a lot of people misunderstand what is actually going on. There are some benefits that can be associated with it, but there's so many different like you know variables that could happen. Like if this, then that. If that, then this. There's all these like dependencies that get formed. Um, I think. When we're talking about strictly, you know, electroculture is, is intended to create an electrical field. Okay, so let's look at that. What happens when you subject um, soil particles to an electrical field? Well, if you have ionized compounds, ionized elements like ionized calcium or ionized magnesium or whatever, those ions actually get affected by the electrical field and they can actually move a little bit differently. And so the idea basically is that, yeah, electrical fields can actually dovetail into nutrient metabolism in plants at large. But then the modifier for that is like, yeah, but what if you don't have ionized particles in your, you don't have ionized atoms inside of your soil? Because mostly the soil is not full of, you know, ionized particles. We're, we're dealing with like mineralized forms of nitrogen, for example, not ionized forms of nitrogen. We're dealing with complexes that are more or less stabilized. We have this sort of like thing, charge balance thing figured out. If you amend your soil with calcium sulfate, you're not dealing with ionized calcium at that point. And so the electrical field is maybe a little bit less relevant overall. I think people also misunderstand the electrical field by thinking that it directly feeds photosynthetic pathways. And that is actually not how it works at all. Um, plants use the power of the sun. They, you know, convert um, light energy into chemical energy through the electron transport chain. But the electron transport chain and how it's evolved to work in plants is much different than a piece of copper wire and electricity that flows in that copper wire, the two, like very little connective tissue between the two of them. And I think it's also worth pointing out that copper itself is considered a micronutrient inside of plants. Yes, it's used for its electrochemical um, properties. I believe this is something we had talked about on your show last episode, but it's accumulated in small concentrations in the plants. And, you know, my suspicion there is that if there was some real benefit associated with this generation of an electric field, that could help stimulate plant growth, nature probably would have found a way to incorporate it into primary metabolism a little bit further and to a more, you know, deep extent than it currently is inside of plants. Um, for a very long time now, you know, preceding the existence of any human on earth, um, plants have been doing this photosynthesis thing with no help at all from copper wires that have been stuck into the ground and generating electrical fields. Um, electrical fields can also impact the um, functioning of certain like protein complexes and certain enzymes. But again, these types of things are typically not found in nature. And so plants have not really evolved ways to optimize being exposed to these electrical fields in a way that like massively increases their yield or quality. Um, that's why the results that you see out there are so mixed. Some people swear by electroculture because they have 25 foot tall corn plants and the ones that didn't get electroculture are only four or five feet tall. But then there's other people who do the exact same studies basically and they find no difference associated with it so i would say it's not one of those things that's like a primary driver i'd say if if you have ionized nutrition that could benefit from being exposed to an electrical field then sure you'd, you'd see some benefit 
as far as nutrient metabolism goes, but it's not like this hidden portal where you can access another level of your plant's performance altogether. I think that's that's a little bit of a myth or a misconception. Um, but, you know, there's again, there's something interesting to be um, studied here and looked at in greater detail, but I do think we need to better characterize what exactly these electrical fields are and how they work in the context of nutrient metabolism, um, enzyme activity, and certainly the biosynthesis of some secondary metabolites that, that might accumulate in higher concentrations. But I don't think there's anything that's really conclusive out there that proves it one way or another. Um, ultimately, plants have electron transport chains, but that's fundamentally different than the way that copper conducts electricity and creates an electrical field. This clip is brought to you by Happy Hydro. For all your garden equipment needs, visit happyhydro.com. Link is in the video description and use the discount code MrGrowIt 